Hey, brother of coaching, how's everyone going on doing? I'd like to welcome you guys to this episode. I uh, tried something different, schedule it in advance. Uh, it's a new feature on the software that I got here. But um, so this episode, as you guys can read up on it, is uh, caring for your people advice that every uh, leadership check the box uh, hater is going to love. What do I mean? The check in the box. I mean these are those courses you take and you learn about theory, not really uh, experience based or any application. And you get a little certificate at the end, and you finish the course, and you still have no idea what the heck to do and um, how to really get the most out of people and, and be that good leader. I'm not a fan of courses like that, so I like to learn from people that have actually done it. So I'm going to just share with you guys this. Um, I was reading uh, like a parenthood book this morning, and I like to alternate between leadership, some learn some parenting stuff, um, some business things to learn, just uh, change it up a little bit. And one of the things that they were talking about in this book uh, was talking about empathy. And you have to have empathy for people. You have to understand where they've been and the process that you got. Because um, what a previous episode I talked about, um, we all take different paths in life. And sometimes for me to maybe make company officer was easier than for you. You had to go through a lot more struggles and hurdles. Or maybe in your personal life, you had to go through a lot more hurdles. You know, there, there's people that are Olympic weightlifters that are missing limbs. You can't tell me uh, that they didn't work harder than someone that's got all their appendages, right? So empathy is understanding, and I was thinking about empathy, and I remember this book I read called Everybody Matters, and it's, it's all about caring for your people uh, like you would uh, your own family, and what's better than that, right? Who doesn't want to be treated like family? Unless you're a screwed up family, then that might not be that good, but anyways, most people, uh, they treat family a certain way, and um, so I want to talk about that. There's like five areas in the book that I went through my highlights that I make on them, and I really want to talk about them and share them with you in this episode. So uh, we'll get just right into the meat and potatoes of it. Um, you know, for, for caring about people, people are going to give you the most effort uh, when they know you give a shit, right? So you have to care about them, and you have to mean it, and you're going to start getting more with it. You know, um, our industry, we're not profit-driven. You know, it's, it's an infrastructure, and um, because of that, it's more about mission statements and getting by and, and getting that effort because just because you run more calls – or you, you risk more doesn't mean you get paid more, right? I mean, most actually, most of us where we're at busy departments or we see a lot of um, maybe house fires or, or some crazy stuff, we probably get paid the least. That's just, you know, we're paid on the tax base. So it's, it's about building that team environment if you really want to get um, the most out of your people with it. So one of the first highlights on there was um, we're social animals and responding to environments that we're in. Well, I want you to think about that one. You know, maybe, maybe you've had an extensive career, maybe you've had a short career. And one of the things you see is, is people respond differently when they're in the social groups. You know, we want to bond with people. So if you go put someone in a group of guys that, you know, are just negative and don't want to do anything, not take care of themselves, you're going to see that person start molding. And I've seen it in my career plenty of times and maybe you've seen it too. Now on the flip side, you actually take those people and you put them with uh, uh, people that are motivated. Maybe they work out every day, they want to do training, and they're really amped about it. You're going to start seeing those people form to that. So it, atmosphere plays a big part, kind of that nature versus nurture thing. Atmosphere is a big influence. Now, you can resist maybe the positivity or the negativity, but it's harder, right? If you're around the good stuff, it's going to be easier for you to be good and, and keep that positivity with it. So that really comes down to the environment you're in. You want to set that right environment. And how do you set that right environment? By caring about your people, right? Um, you know, some of those check-in-the-box things teach, well, you didn't do what I said, so I'm going to... Uh, do a written form, and that written form shows that you didn't do what's right, and this is a process we're going to start to show that you're not listening and most likely lead to discipline. Uh, I've had to do the, I did one of them out of choice one time because I wasn't getting the results I wanted, and I'll tell you right now from my own experience with it, uh, it didn't make things better. All it did is document something and made both parties uh, apprehensive about it, and actually made the guy that I did the counseling form on um, thinking he was going to be targeted. And that wasn't the case. It was, you know, I just didn't know at the time what else I could do. You know, and that led me on some of this journey of realizing I got to build my relationship with this guy. So when I ask him to do something, he wants to do it. It's not, well, I got to do this or else. So some of that check in the box, you know, they just look at, uh, you didn't do it. All right, here, here's your form. Instead of going, hey, why didn't you? What was wrong with the system that we didn't get you there? But guess what? That takes time. That takes energy. And most people, as they start promoting up, they don't. They don't want to make the time or the energy for that because they're so distracted by all these other items going on. So make the atmosphere good. Environment's key, right? Um, 
We're going to measure success by the way we touch the lives of people. So how do you measure success? You know, some people maybe measure success by their bank account. You know, how much they have in it. Some might measure their success by how many bugles they have, right? Um, or we can measure success by how many people we've helped, we've influenced, right? Um, is there a right and wrong? I guess that's really for you to decide with it. But, you know, you can have all the money in the world and no relationship with people and you're probably going to be miserable because, like I said before, earlier, we're social animals, right? We want to be around people. We want to be happy. So measure success with how you're actually impacting people. Maybe you're the guy they bring to and you're making everybody great at forcible entry or you're getting them to motivate and take on extra responsibilities around the station. You're the developer, whatever it may be. Or you're the person that um, maybe you're heading up uh, a committee and you're able to make some safety changes to, to improve things. You know? Um, you know, every now and then I get some nice messages here on Facebook um, or Instagram and even some emails of people. You know, they show me that maybe they like some of the quotes. The, they use some of the tips I did in the book. Um, whatever it is, I get that feedback and I'm like, oh, that, that, that's awesome. You know what I mean? And it's, it's not money coming in or anything like that. It's, it's them showing me, hey, you helped me out with this. And it's, it's a great feeling, you know. So measure it by the success you have. You know, like we don't get pay raises for doing better for the most part. So especially around your station, um, you know, are you having people meet the goals? Are you pushing them where they want? You know, some people uh, just want to be firefighters. Some people want to be drivers. Some want to be captains. Some want to battalion and keep going up. We all have different wants. You know, it's I see a lot of times people that want to uh, be chief officers have a hard time understanding that maybe people are just happy. Wherever the level they're at, you know, there's a good saying, don't promote above the level of happiness in the fire service. Because as you promote up, it changes, right? Um, maybe you're not on the rig anymore. Maybe you're 40 hours, whatever it may be. Um, it's going to change. So you have to be ready for those, those different responsibilities in that different role. Um, so I don't know, I'm just big on it. You know, I, I see my guys getting more, um, either become active drivers, they get uh, become paramedics. Whatever me, I start seeing that, and they're happier, or they do their own training. Uh, real quick, I uh, my daughter was sick, uh, not my last duty day, duty day before that, um, so I had called in sick so I could take care of her, and uh, it was our training day. My crew went out without me, and they trained, and to me, that's a huge win because they weren't waiting for the officer to go, hey, you guys got to go. They went, hey, it's our training day. We got to go, and they ended up doing multiple different drills, helping each other out. One guy put a workout on. Another guy worked on his um, acting engineer stuff, and um, you know they deployed our new hose load that we've had. I've got saw some posts before working on new hose load, and that was just awesome to see. You know, I told my wife, I'm like, ah, they don't need me. You know, they can do it themselves, and and they did a good training, and that was made me really happy to see that going on. So we'll move on to uh, highlight number three in the book: um, good parenting and good leadership are virtually identical. Now I talked about this in the book Fix Your Firehouse, and I'm a true proponent of it. Um, I didn't have kids until I got into um, my mid thirties and I started seeing that I started understanding more because you know, there's guys that, you know, they come in tired or whatever and they're talking about the kids. I'm like, what are you talking about before I had them? I didn't understand. And it really uh, humbled me, uh, mellowed me out a little bit to understand of, you know, you have to be really patient. You have to be patient with kids. You have to be patient with people, with adults and that, that parenting aspect and that leadership aspect, uh, they're one and the same. So, I mean, if you go find a, a crappy leader, uh, there's a good chance they're struggling in that parenthood too. So work on both. You know, one of my guys, um, he's kind of delaying, want to work on his uh, acting officer, and he, he's a really good dad. And I told him, I'm like, it, it, it's one and the same, and you're going to do really well when you decide to take that on. Um, so those two go hand in hand. You know, basically, you're going to be the parent there. You got to take care of them. You got to, you know, hold people accountable to stuff and, and get them to do it. But you also, you know, got to care about them and, and help them along. Uh, treat each employee the way you'd like your, your child to be treated. And, you know, that helped a lot of times when I was meeting uh, maybe some activities that were almost insubordination, you know, understanding what's going on with this person, you know. And would I want my uh, son or daughter yelled at? Absolutely not, you know. I'm hoping I'm, by the time they get of age for stuff, I'm still going to be working out. I'm going to be doing a lot better in jujitsu. And if dad's got to come in, dad's going to come in, right? Because those are my babies and they'll be my babies uh, until I'm not here anymore. Um, so how do you want your children treated? Right, you know, treat people like that because whoever you're talking to, they're someone's child. They might not be someone's parent. Maybe they didn't have kids or anything, but we're all someone's child. So how do you want them treated? Um, and I think that's real important when you got to keep that in mind. You know, 
there's a high probability that they're actually not resisting something just to be a jerk. They're resisting because there's a lack of understanding, a communication gap that happened. All right, the last part is um, be patient with those that don't get it. This is, to me, this is a real big one. So you be patient with those that don't get it. Uh, people may have been abused by leaders. Uh, give them time to heal. Are there good leaders? Absolutely. Are there bad leaders? Yes. Are there mediocre leaders? Okay. I have stories of past leaders that uh, when you screwed up, they didn't come talk to you about it and try and correct it. They'd make a little note and they put that note in a little file. So you had no idea you were screwing up until your yearly email came and all of a sudden there was all this documentation about all your screw ups. And everyone was just like, why didn't you just tell me? And that's, uh, people started learning from that and they would keep doing items like that. And, um, you know, that's bad leadership. You know, I'm not going to know I'm doing something wrong unless you tell me I'm doing something wrong. You know, most people think what they're doing is okay unless something said otherwise. Or maybe they had a leader that was, um, you know, I had a boss that would go hide uh, tools off the engine, maybe a screwdriver. And, and guilty as charged. At the time, I didn't uh, make sure we had all five screwdrivers. Um, did I from then on? Absolutely. Uh, but he was trying to jam up actually another driver. And he ended up getting me, and I was just confused. I go, hey, if you didn't know the screwdriver was there, why don't you just put it back? Why'd you do this little game with it? And that's bad leadership. He's trying to catch you. He's setting you up for failure. Who does that? All right? So there's people that just try to attack others. You know, um, you know, there's times I've just – I've watched people just pick at people to get them to be more negative and to mess up a system and try to build them up. And so people get abused by it, and they go, oh, it's not, nothing's going to change with that. Um, what's the point of even trying? You see a lot of frustrations start happening because they, they were abused by leadership, poor leadership in the past, and it can happen. Um, I've experienced in the past, um, hopefully I've not more, but you never know what's going to happen, right? Um, so you, because they don't get it, because no one is there to give it to them, so help, help them get it. You know, Especially if you're in a job, help those around you become a little bit more. It might not be to get to your level that you think they should be. But if you can get them a little more in the job than they were, that's a win, right? So um, we reviewed the book, uh, Everybody Matters, How to Treat People uh, Like Family. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to show you a quick screenshot of it. Uh, so if you guys want to order it, it's, it's a good book. And um, I'm going to get it on here real quick. Uh, there's a link for it, Everybody Matters. Um, extraordinary power caring for people. Hi, look, I bought that back in 2015. I uh, did the ebook on it. I wish I would have gotten a hardcover because I would have loaned it out. Actually, at the time, I, I did a little um, uh, email about it in my department, and when our deputy chief at the time asked to borrow it, I'm like, ah, I couldn't figure out how to loan him my Kindle book. And I said, I wish I had it, but um, it's a good book to go get, and I highly recommend it. Let's see if I can get you guys back. So um, go ahead and get yourself a copy of that. Learn a little bit more um, the way you want to treat people. Um, the way you treat people is how they're going to start performing. You know, if you treat someone like they suck all the time, they're, they're going to start sucking. All right, treat people like they do good and, and catch them doing the good stuff, and they're going to start improving. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, if you got something out of it, as always, share it up with other people. Um, it'll be posted up on YouTube. Um, head over to BrotherhoodCoaching.com. I actually did a little update um, earlier today on the site. And there's going to be a couple more updates coming within the next few weeks that I think you guys are going to enjoy. So otherwise, I'll talk to you guys later, and you guys have a good one, and take care of your people.